Du Ewa Frazier is a Brooklyn-born, award-winning poet, performer, author, speaker, and educator. Du Ewa's 2019 TEDx talk, Word is Bond, received favorable reviews for its themes related to hip-hop, education, and social justice awareness. She has received honors, including recognition from the American Library Association, BCLA Conference, University City Arts and Letters Commission, Mayor's Proclamation, Writer's Digest, and NAACP Image Awards. She is the author of several volumes of poetry, including Goddess Under the Bridge Poems, and author of several children's books and books for teens, Alice's Musical Debut, Quincy Rules, and Deanne in the Middle. Her writing has been published in numerous journals, anthologies, and magazines. She has toured and featured in Paris, France, New York City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Atlanta, Berkeley, California, St. Louis, and other locations. Duet will earn the MFA degree in creative writing at the New School. She earned advanced degrees in education from Fordham University and Columbia University. She earned the BA degree in English at Hampton University. Visit her author page here at Facebook, Duewa Frazier. Follow her on Twitter at Duewa Frazier One. Visit her artist site at duewaworld.com. Greetings, friends, and welcome to the beautiful word renaissance of virtual poetry reading. I'm your host, Du Ewa Frazier, and tonight we're bringing you wonderful poetry from award-winning notable poets, Curtis L. Chrysler, Demetrius Daniel, myself, Keisha Gay Anderson, and Tongo Eason Martin. I'm going to start off with a few poems for you, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Amadou Diallo, Trayvon Martin, Romaine Brisbane, Tamir Rice, Kajimi Powell, Ezell Ford, Dante Parker, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, John Crawford III, Tyree Woodson, Victor White III, Yvette Smith, Mackenzie Cochran, Jordan Baker, Freddie Gray, Andy Lopez, Miriam Carey, Jonathan Farrell, Carlos Alsis, Larry Eugene Jackson, Chantel Davis, Kamani Gray, Ayana Jones, Rakia Boyd, Oscar Grant, Sandra Bland, Ahmad Aubrey, Ahmad Aubrey, Ahmad Aubrey, I never dreamed you leave in summer. They're afraid to say her name, the name of a black woman soldier, a daughter, a sister, a woman who loved her community, her people. They're afraid to say her name for fear her bones may rise up to form a prison around them, closing in on them, suffocating them slowly. They're afraid to say her name because the blood and tears of her mother, grandmother, sisters, and all of the women ancestors who came before her will form an ocean a sweet smelling ocean enticing them to enter only to drown them in. They're afraid to say her name for fear that black women and girls from every corner of the globe will unify, holding hands, sinking with hearts and minds, summoning a most magnificent blanketing healing power, casting out all who never come in peace, only war. They're afraid to say her name because she knew her rights and refused to stay in the passive place of a black girl with her eyes wide shut, mouth closed, waiting for someone insignificant to validate her very being. They're afraid to say her name because she knew her purpose. And just like Rosa Parks, she refused to back down. They refused to say her name because saying her name gives her back the power that was taken from her, robbed from her. And as they keep silent and turn their backs, our bones grow restless. We form an ocean for Sandra Bland. I never dreamed you leave in summer. I thought you would go then come back home. The 
this next poem is titled Blues River and it's from my last collection of poetry, Goddess Under the Bridge Poems. No one ever swims in the river where cobblestones disappear, where Oshun waits for honey and cinnamon, holding her mirror up for you to catch a glimpse of your reflection in the waves. Pay ye ye for a love blessing. No one ever swims in the river that separates St. Louis from East St. Louis. Don't be caught in East Boogie after dark. You do, you better come strapped. No one ever swims in the water traveling from Louisiana to Minnesota like ancestors during the Great Migration. Mississippi songs called blues, floating on the backs of traveling souls, creating a world from hope. No one ever swims in the mighty Mississippi River unless to get swept away in time and never return. This next poet I'm going to introduce you to is a fantastic poet an author and award-winning writer, Curtis L. Chrysler, was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. He received a BA in English with a minor in theater from Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. And he received an MFA degree from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. Chrysler's and Kevin McKelvey's book, Indiana Nocturnes, Our Rural and Urban Patchwork, was recently released by Nibo Publishing. Other poetry books are The Gray Album Poems, won the Steel Toe Books Open Reading P Period Prize, Don't Moan So Much, A Poetry Muse Aquarium was published by Caddy Wampus Press, This Americana was published by Sherry Castle Publishing, Cherry Castle Publishing, his poetry chapbook Black Achilles was published by Accents Publishing. His previous books are Pulling Scabs, nominated for a push cart, Tough Boy Sonatas, and Dreamus, a mixed genre novel, young adult novel. Other chapbooks are Wonderkind, nominated for a push cart, Soundtrack to Latchkey Boy, Spill, which won a Keyhole Chapbook Award, and Burnt Offering of a City, which won the Kathy Young Chapbook Award. Curtis is a recipient of fellowships and residencies from the City of Asylum, Pittsburgh, Cave Canem, the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, Soul Mountain, a guest resident at Hamline University, and a guest resident at Words on the Go. Curtis has also received a Library Scholars Grant Award, Indiana Arts Commission Grants, Eric Hoffer Awards, the Sterling Plunk First Voices Poetry Award, and he was nominated for the Elliot Rosewater Award and the Jesse Redmond Fawcett Book Award. Curtis can be reached at poetchrisler.com. Please welcome Curtis L. Chrysler. Uh, I'm Curtis L. Chrysler, and I'll be reading from uh, Indiana Nocturnes. This is a book by myself and Kevin McKelvey that's uh, new, is out now. And I'm just gonna read a few poems from it. The first one is called Black to Black. Responding to Adrian Matika's Luke Cage. These things you say come to me like arrows. So I am caught in the lack of translation maybe. But if I were bulletproof, I would let our mess roll on ground. Fancy at that bounce, hot bullet shells. Power, I must wear a suit to be Black Panther. Power, I could still be peeved. I had to change my rep to Black Leopard, just to offset the press of Rap Brown and Huey, suffocating world and how to identify brownness. Don't sweat small rut. Man, the economy has our spandex and bunch. Wakanda's not the US and heroes come and go. Many turning vigilante, many dealing with identity in this age of establishing a name. I wonder if Waku went through any of this. Power. Don't fret the sidekick. We dress on new trends. Texas and all is Texasness. Try being prodigal king, the brother of Aurora, still fighting rituals, decrees, sick new philosophies. I used to kick a cake, but I'm not the vision, right? Madness has us on lock. Negroes can't grow froze without being political. It is hard to see with Iraq and Afghanistan. 
folks fighting to hold on to smoke and mirrors, minerals only the earth owns. Remember how we got James Brown out of that Nixon mess? Most only think of us as Marvel lackeys. The myths, the fictations, the counterbalances with DC. Recognition is like pointing out a specific ant from outer space. Will not happen without superpowers, right? At least Daniel has your real. Ha, I never thought I would see a day a black man kicks it with pale sidekick. Fab tabulous. To me, you're holding your blue too tight. Power. I grew up spinning inside my brain too. Why are you hovering in sight, contradicting how you know true? Mama used to say, you will have to work twice as hard. Why fight funk? Do you. Be you. Work you. Everything else, just antics. Reality TV. Ratings. You know this loop. Until next time. Ororo sends a love. Stay hungry. T'Challa. The next poem I'm reading is called You Bring Out the Woman in Me and comes from uh, the device that Sandra Cisneros used and Balfi used. And I'm just using it uh, changing gender instead of talking about identity. You bring out the woman in me. You bring out the blood, fluid, and pain to the umbilical cord of all my children, breathing the knot. You bring out the woman in me, the mama, mommy, mother of voices rushing down the hallway of life's time. You bring out the psychopath in me, the functioning under pressure of me, this nucleus of a thing outside of womanism, outside of feminism, outside of glossy mags and how to please your man overkill when I am the mother to existence of me. You bring out the man eater, the man hater, the frustrator, the rejuvenator of me. I am nothing but the everything of anything in the immediacy of a second in me. You bring out the how I figured out the hot, hot, hot in me the cold, cold, cold to breathing, that if you don't get out my face in the next minute of me, so I can implode from the kernel of a popcorn seed into a butterfly. You bring out the Queen Latifah in me, the ladies first, the June Jordan in me, the Carolyn M. Rogers in me, the light-skinned girl born in Gary in me. You, you, you bring out the maternal key in me. You are the face in the mirror in me the bump, bump, bump in my chest that bumps. You bring out the terrifying in me and sit it down like an ohm. You bring out the beautiful fangs in me. I'm running through the streets, a car on fire, and I am breathing in all the pollution of the city, changing it into planetary bodies. You, you, you reveal the surgical bikini scar of me, the botched tattoo nightmare of some other name on me, cause you, 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 own words, the placenta of every kernel of knowledge I need in you, 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 click, click, pow. Thank you. You are a prolific writer and I appreciate it. And you'll come back again um, in the next set. Thank you so much. Thank you. This next poet I'm going to be on is, I'm bringing on is Keisha Gay Anderson. She is a wonderful poet who hails from New York. And Keisha, I'm sure you have seen her at many venues. She is an award-winning poet, Jamaican-born poet, writer, visual artist, and media professional based in Brooklyn, New York. Keisha is the author of Gathering the Waters by Jami Publishing 2014. Everything is Necessary by Willow Books 2019, and A Spell for Living, which received the Editor's Choice recognition for the Numinous Orisons, Luminous Origin Literary Award, and is forthcoming from Agape Editions as a multimedia ebook, including music and Keisha's original artwork. Keisha's poetry, fiction, and essays have been widely published in national literary journals, magazines, and anthologies that include Quayley Literary Journal, Small X Salon, Interviewing the Caribbean, Renaissance Noir, The Caribbean Writer, The Killens Review of Arts and Letters, 
Mosaic Literary Magazine, and many others. Keisha is a past recipient of the Bona Voices and Callaloo Fellowship Writing Workshops, a former fellow of the North Country Institute for Writers of Color, and was shortlisted for the Small Oxe Literary Competition. In 2018, Keisha was selected as a Brooklyn Public Library artist in residence. Her visual art has been featured in exhibitions in the tri-state area and in such literary journals as the Adirondack Review, Joint Literary Magazine, and No Dear Publishing uh, Magazine. Keisha holds an MFA degree in creative writing from the City College CUNY. She lives in Brooklyn with her husband and two children. Learn more about Keisha's work at Keisha Gay. Dot Inc. Let's welcome Keisha Gay Anderson. Beautiful. Welcome. Um, so nice to be with you all in this space. I'm going to read two poems. The first one is going to come from my book, Everything is Necessary. All right. It's called Ancestors. Well, you wanted to look into the dark, didn't you? So don't curse these eyes. We gave them to you and sent you to straighten the bends in these steel tracks that link all of our names, rusted under salt water, buried beneath bundles of cane. Sing songs into candle flame for these bones of mine that now reach through you, stand you into six feet of woman. They have not forgotten how to brace against the lash or bend backward for the bembe. Each day we move with you, can't you hear? We are riding the rhythm that beats these words through your center. You beg us to enter, but we never left. We is me, is you, us all now, together since forever. We laugh and lift your sight towards starshine, seashells, sleeping, poetry in every alley and pissed on corner. We tune your ears to the footfall of predators who stroke their loneliness to the bowline of your lips. You wanted to know, not believe. So see it all here now and build a lather with these visions that lift us up one by one, hand over hand, after birth, to under dirt. We listen with you. Roll slowly up this mountain that needed us to tumble down, break ground, and move things. So look, kill your fear, open these eyes, pull us back together, and march us home. Next poem I'm going to share with you is recently published in a beautiful journal called Jet Fuel Review, and it's called War. A war can be quiet like, hey, try these pills. We can skip gym class or casting, sassy black friend, prostitute, thug number three. A war disappears those who pray in cathedrals or survive in the bullseye of its permanent theater. 75,000 missing black girls gone quietly. No one sees because no one ever saw. Did that really happen? I don't see race. A war sprouts pyres of glass and steel around you, calls it revitalization, incinerates the frame house of your honest work and the one safe place for your children to exist as themselves. A war assures you that you think too much, that you are paranoid, hands you any version of God that will shut you up. While the priests all know the allegories are more than a bedtime story, are absolutely a map in, up and out which you won't figure out. A war is putrid, rotting life that looks like maltodestrin, arsenic, petroleum, all the not food you have the constitutional right to consume. A war be writ in your birth certificate. Are you legal? We can never be sure about these shores we stumble onto, blind and fragile, pull through waters by unanswered questions, just to find community in the shape of shattered glass, mass amnesia, like a fog under a new moon. But since when is the warrior afraid of war? We keep coming because the war sounds like an abang, waking us up to teach. We cannot die. We are the I am that always be and a war is a blip on the timeline of the galaxy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keisha, for your beautiful reading. I'm so happy to be able to see you live in this season. 
Uh, despite everything, we're uplifting people with our words. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. Keisha will be brought back on in our uh, last set for another poem. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you. Our next poet is Tongo Eason Martin. Tongo was born in San Francisco and earned his MA degree at Columbia University. He is the author of Someone's Dead Already by Bootstrap Press 2015, nominated for a California Book Award, and Heaven is All Goodbyes, published by City Lights 2017, which received a 2018 American Book Award, a 2018 California Book Award, was named a 2018 National California Booksellers Association, Poetry Book of the Year and was shortlisted for the 2018 Griffin International Poetry Prize. In their citation, the judges for the Griffin Prize wrote that Tongo Eason Martin's work moves between trenchant political critique and dreamlike association, demonstrating how in the right hands, one mode might energize the other, keeping alternative orders of meaning alive in the face of radical injustice. Tango's poems are places where discourses and vernaculars collide and recombine into new configurations capable of expressing outrage, sorrow, and love. Tango Issa Martin is also an educator and organizer whose work centers on issues of mass incarceration, extrajudicial killings of Black people, and human rights. He has taught at detention centers around the country and at the Institute for Research in African American Studies at Columbia University. Tango lives in San Francisco. Visit his website at poetryfoundation.org slash poets slash Tango Eason Martin or Instagram at underscore, underscore Tango Gara underscore. Please welcome Tango Eason Martin. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you. I'm going to uh, do two poems. Uh, the, the first actually uh, snuck through with no title. <laughs> and uh, the second poem is titled, uh, I Do Not Know the Spelling of Money. You can tell by my tires that not everybody who's driven with me is still alive. Also, that I like my drinks neat bottled and in a bus stop. Also, that we're drowning in precinct paper, department store floor plans and applications to the moon. And we can change the color of our snot from gifted to heart attack and tell you about ashes, but where are all these angels coming from smelling like the cigarette that fails? And why is the man on the safe side of these headlights freezing up? You have nothing to say at my funeral, I'll speak on your behalf. Heroin in my smile. Mountain made a flatland robbery among some things on my mind. The last store running the name of shared afterlife. Friday to the filter, I'm a tall tale on earth. But here's to that angel that never appeared to America in a night of dog paddle and a batch of hangovers looking for a home. You know, a lie wouldn't live this long. That's my human when fences speak. On a pair of rambling dice that got unique tempers and young souls that say shut up about our city. Here, title must crash over a coast while I lie. The street's teeth are in pieces. There's reservoir art on the faces of stragglers. It's sad news from back home that mean we have to grow up on his behalf. Stumble back to a car full of last damn. The truth is stale, but still liquor. Mission Street will be proud of me. I'm a mural man, almost organized. Remember when my lungs would wake up last, walking on morning if it was worth it. I'm three decades homeless, and reservoir art is all I ever see. And I'm 2,000 miles from my first fight. Maybe no one really survived. Maybe I wrote my first poem for no reason. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mug shot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm ricochet sewage near where I collapsed into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti in the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part. My body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets pray over blankets made from old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration, the waistband before the next protest poster. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. I will save your desk for last. You are witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It's only raining one thing, non-white cops. 
and prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill. A neighborhood making a lot of fuss over its demise. A new lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village. A new noose to a new white preacher all in an abstract painting of a president. It bought slavery some time, didn't it? The tantric screeches of military boats and election Tuesday cars. A cold-blooded study in leg irons. Leg irons inside of a tornado shelter. Leg irons inside of your body. Proof that some white people have actually fondled nooses. The sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and bolt action audiences. The Medgar every second is definitely my favorite law of science. Final news clippings and primitive Methodists. My arm changes imperialism, simple policing versus structural frenzies. The elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums. Artless bleeding and the challenge of watching civilians think at terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war, what with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt guilt and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. All right, thank you. Uh, that would be the end. <laughs> I ran one in it, too. Thank you, Tongo. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And I hear all those themes that are so needed right now uh, for our community. And Tongo's going to be back again for the next set. Thank you again, Tongo. Much love. Much, much love. Okay, so I'm going to read my last poem for the evening. And um, first, I want to um, just mention that this poem was written in tribute to Shirley LaFleur, who is our recent past, uh, uh, was the recent past St. Louis Poet Laureate in St. Louis, Missouri. And I wrote this poem for the occasion of honoring Shirley at a 2016 event at the Missouri History Museum. It was a beautiful event featuring many poets. And um, I gave this to Shirley and may she rest in peace, poetry and power. Love to the Griot Woman for Shirley LaFleur on March 15th, 2016. Can you be jazz, Griot Woman? Making melodies with the sound of your voice, syncing your words with the music of the late greats like Bird and Coltrane, Monk and Davis. Can you be the sound of the drum? Sitting inside the djembe and conga, speaking to hearts, telling your stories, cloaking us in your truth with divine intentions. Can you be ocean, Griot woman, cleansing us of a pain-filled past, showing us how to love the language, art, and culture of a people who have walked this earth for thousands of years? Can you be like Griot woman, lighting our path with your colors and aura, what you speak we become, your vision is our vision, so be it. Can you be courage, Griot woman, living through years of protests, segrega segregation, degradation, sexism, and oppression? Can you be education, Griot woman, teaching the children and the grown folks too, teaching the written and the spoken word, teaching about the woman, teaching about African-American history through literature, art, and writing? Can you be art, Griot woman, leading the Black arts movement, carrying your sword and shield with grace, rising up to laugh and cry and birth and play and heal and dig deep into our ancestral consciousness? Can you be the bridge between our past and present, showing us how to carve a place for ourselves in this life, showing us how to mix music with word and make magic? Can you be a woman who transcends time and space, an artist healer among artists, a role model, teacher and scribe for the gods? Can you continue to be free while showing us how to be free ourselves? Thank you. And so now we're going to start our round robin reading, which will be the last set uh, for our The Beautiful Word Renaissance virtual poetry event. And so I'd like to bring up Curtis L. Quisler again, once again. This is called Sleeper Cells, A Father and Plants Life Match for Reginald Dwayne Betts and Roger Bonaragar. 
When most men bend crooked like rivers and every chest hair reminds you of your uncle, the grunts, your grandpapa, you mesmerize at your father like he, the sweet crumb of cornbread, trapped in his own black beard. You don't wonder. You are too young to tag all the wins and losses. The many daddies dropping, dropping, dropping. These moments vesperize jumping crystal before halogen car lamps. How you are now, no more twinkle and inkling. Real motion gaining for balance with each wobbly step. Dad's rich with smiles. You are in his optics measuring his future. His tunnel vision enlarges, replete with glad tensions of gives and takes, tensions for planet bluebells and lullabies growing in tomorrow things. He does this grooming, this watering with tears, this talking, so his child moves beyond semi-precious, becomes valued minerals exploding in the earth, rich with runoff, grows to outlaw the jaded of world's dubiousness. You, child, are neo-tsunami, the cockaber within hot verbs against stasis, the moon's electric bill re receipt. He has prepared you for next Saturday's rebellion. Touch your face and photo album is each and every believe. Thank you. Curtis, and I do have a question for you about your latest work. Congratulations on Indiana Nocturne. Thank you, thank you. And Shout so out to Kevin McCalvin. What's that? <laughs> I said shout out to Kevin McKelvey. And, sh and we shout both out to Kevin today. McKelvey as well. Congratulations yeah. to you both. And so where can we find uh, your latest work, uh, Indiana Nocturnes? There is a, uh, you can go to uh, poetchrysler.com and uh, you can find a link there. And there is a link on Nebo uh, Publishing.com as well as there is, it's new. There is a uh, Indiana Nocturnes uh, Facebook page, I think we have. So those are places that you can find it. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for joining us tonight. I so enjoyed your poetry. I appreciate you and wish you the best on your writings. And so you'll hang around and we'll, before we close out uh, at the end. Definitely. And thank you so much for your, for your words tonight. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this event. I think it's just, a needed event. So thanks for having us. Thank you. And next, I'd like to bring up again the wonderful Keisha Gay Anderson to share another poem with us. Great. Thank you. All right. Some new work here. Black is not enough. Black is not enough to go by. It's too narrow a space, too clumsy a way to reveal you. Don't you see your place up high along the winding trail of lights resting on mother's neck? Can you name all the shapes of your intelligence that sometimes when it feels like splashes over the brim of infinity to condense as jazz, a dance of colors at five points, Denzel's deep sea eyes and our snaking hips to the dance hall rhythms dip, 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 dip. Unleash your ecstatic laughter for this joyous walk through time and mirrors, where you can love you as us, as all of this. Salt foam under a lavender sun, the jubilant tale of your familiar, a warm kiss of wind in a glade exploding with new life, the sweet sacrifice of guiding the next navigator of your blood. Black is not enough, is too dim an idea, too minuscule a name for us. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keisha. And I really want to ask you about your work. You are so prolific and I always see you as doing so many readings and events and uh, congratulations on your uh, latest book. And I just like to ask you, where can we find uh, your latest book, which is Everything is Necessary? Mm -hmm. You can go to Willow Books directly, which is my publisher. And it's always good to support the publisher. And you can order there or you can get it on Amazon. And there's also a version on Audible. 
So. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate hearing your words tonight. And I'm sure the audience does as well. It's so uplifting and so needed at this time. And just please hang around uh, for the end and uh, we'll bring up the next poet. Thank you again. Thank you. And so I'd like to bring up Tongo Issa Martin again to join us in sharing his uh, last poem with us tonight. I talk facing away from the dead. They replace me with the change in my pocket. A penny that's yet to be invented. They say you have to know how to cut a throat on the way to cutting a throat. After sleeping on a mattress made from two garbage bags of clothes, I became content with the small gestures of plantation fires. Playing with cow dashes, I realized how weird the universe was. It exists in so many places, so many random things. It interrupts me while I'm trying to dream, like your clay correspondence, Lord. To be transparent, I have 20 books next to a bullet like an old man giving advice at the beginning of a revolution. I've really done it, Lord. Explored the mumbles of my mind, explored what's naturally there, and I found no brainwashing. I found Africa, Lord. I have a future. It takes place in the diaspora south. I have morning possessions, modern militancy. I mean, windows to the south. I'll walk on a missile for food. I guess you would not want flowers for a few years, Lord. Will I be tied face to face with the country I murdered, merged with us, Lord? Our old metal versus new metal. Our old metal versus a pool of meandering and peerless faces, a multiculturalism of sorts that replaced me with a comedian's chest cavity instead of a chest cavity held tight. It takes a violent middleman for me to talk to myself. Stories that travel through other people's stories. A song about a song, a hemisphere about a hemisphere. Stories that travel through a conquered poet. My mother remembers Africa, Lord. She killed on behalf of you, Lord. I wore a machete all winter and no one asked me what it meant. I read 1,000 books in front of the world. You know, what I do is fight poems and sleep through decadent San Francisco prayer circuits. Watch people play for post-working class associative services and recreations of a governor's desk, you know, ruling class art of utility plan, find a sociopathic bureaucrat. A day some white people scare even easier. TV in a basket next to a ceramic baby wearing ceramic arm musket progeny fantasizing through the art of the poor. Their trendy latches locked before God. Black art hunted down like a dog and hand over my friends, Lord. Lord, I think I'm going to die in a war. Unelected white people in my small house like a blue song of no spiritual effect or dollhouse age bomb a pony show near dead bodies apartheid weddings that go right apartheid white people who give birth to mathematicians the special continuity of banks and police stations a chemical interpretation of a Sunday trip to church church smells in their pockets a river mistaken for a talking river no autobiography outside of small personal victories of violence and drug use made in the image of God's trinkets with white abolitionists confided in their children about chemical assurances that they will switch from black artists to white artists, uh, black God to white God, uh, black worker to white worker. I think about you cautiously, Lord. In the same way I think about my childhood, Lord. Foxhole Friday nights, most of life is mute. A comedian points out a planter's field to a priest, King Sugar King, King Cotton King, revolutionary to Bala Central, containing all modes of shallow introduction, introducing an unlisted planter class speaking about fevers and balance sheets and reassuring the masses that we can figure out our fathers later. A priest took my mother lightly, Lord, Stood in front of parishioners re-raveling fantasies about black art. Priest reading confidently before I broke him and broke his parallel. After the day, I've never been a poet before. A little brother watches his big brother's friends. You know, they lean rifles on sheltered walls. They agree with me and call it literature. It's a simple matter, this revolution thing. To really lie to no one, to keep nothing godlike, to write a poem for God. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tongo. That was perfect. And, you know, your voice is like, it gives us the urgency and I really appreciate it. So we are all, all actually going to come back together. Boy, this time went by so quick. We didn't even do an hour. You know, I'm used to the events that are an hour or more long. Uh, so I like to bring all of you back together. And um, if we can, you know, read another poem and we just be together, you know, just uh, one last time, if that's okay with you all. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'm going to read a poem called I Am a Man. And this was um, featured in, on the uh, Split This Rock blog a few years ago. Mm 
You just need to get it. I am a man. I am America. I bleed the red, white, and blue. I helped build this country, yet you made me strange fruit. I am a man, yet this system just won't see why I am so feared. I taught you justice. I impact every aspect of culture, history, and society. Still, you ignore my claims, my cries. I am Thurgood Marshall's gavel. I am Toussaint Louverture's sword. I am Frederick Douglass's pen. I am W.E.B. Du Bois' intellect. I am James Henry Clark honoring history. I am Paul Robeson, Renaissance man, hear me speak. I am Malcolm X. I am Negra Evers. I am Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I am Nat Turner. I am Langston Hughes. I too sing America. I am James Baldwin, native son. I am Amiri Baraka. I am blues music, blues poetry. I am H. Rap Brown. I am last poets. I'm not afraid of revolution. I am Huey P. Newton giving power to the people. I am Eldridge Cleaver. I am the Scottsboro Boys. I am Jenna Six. I am Trayvon, Tasmir, and Kajimi. Don't let me go. Never forget me. I am Michael Brown. I am Eric Garner. I am Ahmaud Arbery. See me carrying years of oppression on my back because my DNA has a memory and yours does too. I am a man. I am no different from you. I am marching to take a stand and in the time of this new civil rights era, this revolution will most certainly be televised, photographed and videotaped. I, galvan I galvanize and organize, see me, hear me. You may burn down my house, spread your hate on my street. You may try to kill me, say I wanted it, asked for it, deserved it. You may call me every N word, jigaboo in the book. Still, I will not retreat. I will protect my family. I will raise my children. I will secure the future of the next generation. I will teach. I will pray for my people and this nation under God. I will create a new world, one that makes you see me, hear me, respect me, honor me. I will fight for justice. I will fight to be seen as a man in all of my power, in all of my glory. I will fight to be viewed as a human of value. On the shoulders of my ancestors do I stand as I proclaim, I am a man. And so I just like to um, ask uh, each of you all, if you have another poem you wanna share, we love to hear it. And thank you so much again for joining me. And um, so uh, Keisha or Tongo or Curtis, if yeah. one of you wants to. I can, I can go. Okay. <laughs> uh, guided by, um, guided by T. Of this country, there's a cow's mouth on the flag. A peculiar notepad holds street life beer, but the writer is not here. He's somewhere talking to Tombstone about the good old days, or was, was splashing reborn water on his latest face, or wondering how his old gun is doing in the afterlife, and wondering how much death trap is in those gas station eyes. I mean, it got to be a million dollars a day on this concrete island. New engine in the moon, why it never goes down. I mean, 72 straight hours of night, at least according to everyone's posture around here. 30 in the morning is really 30 minutes of closing. The city shuts down for a sleepy rat race. Elevator shoot shuffle to the nearest heaven, laughing with rats the whole way up. There's scabs everywhere, in mean, puddles of city and concentrated schools and TV lit warm rooms. You know, the light reveals military fatigue when it hits just right on the ties that are wrapped around the necks of lazy white guys. Empire is too easy, baby. Chant at the walls all summer if you feel like toy for a target to be shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance, but may we be the last poor men to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. The politician raises his hand and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little girls are not safe outside. You all high depressed and comrades and function. In 15 minutes of closing in the city, it survived another black rebellion. I mean, we just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can set. Don't you love how deadly things whisper in the moment and people kill like feathers fall with everybody screaming inside? The writer knows that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor. In a house that smells like road traces, nuclear percentages on torn stalls. I mean, here life never was. It's just lazy matches and manic inhumanity, hands rushing away from life towards those who we doing here, surviving for no reason in particular, because nobody's gone far today. Nobody will go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens with secondhand clothes play and concrete wishes to be human so that it could be accountable. 
where they find you drenched and drains wish to be human so that they could be worthy arms for you to die in. Hey, greet them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is calm and don't say we ghost didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Yeah, you remember the shotgun by the cold rack that everybody in the house out of you? You remember the tight road made needs for walking in between five ways and man made best friends? Go ahead, grandson. Tune in street again. Never mind this country kills musicians first. Broken neck night, scarred neck life. I mean, if these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your angle, angel eyes? 30 to 50 rounds pass by our street with no daughters. The street has no sons. It's young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital and we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at teeth. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Nice. Thank you. Right All right. I guess I'll go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read from Gathering the Waters. It's called Mask. Do not remove your mask here, my sister. Not yet. There's too much unraveling to do. So many becomings hinging on your memory of you and every oil rig and chemical disguised as food, every antipsychotic fed to babies, every sterilized wound, every somebody grateful they weren't born as brown and black as you. Every single one of them is a blessed lightning bolt. Waking your heart to its black hole, pulling together your shattered pieces to reassemble the monolith that is you blasted to pieces when the all became two. For them that cut cane, tie bows around the canoe, pull sweet grass into baskets, give lyrics to the blues. Sing cantos, dos orishas, make bombs out of house plants, turn tears into flamenco and put the sway in belly dance. I say to you, stand your ground, adorn your countenance, become a legend but meet the people where they are. Because this dream is a westbound train heading for a cliff a race from panic calling itself progress. So be the honey music that bends the trap, alters the root, and bury the earth's heartbeat in the back room of their minds. Lure them to the dance of their existence through the bacchanal of your smile. Don't think, simply be. Don't look for the answer in any four walls. Prove there are no walls. And lay out your best peacock feathers, cowrie shells, white lace, overproof rum for the journey, the path, El Camino, this trip, that you chip, chip, chip down the roads of creation to the percussion of your hips. Grow away from the circles of madness, but keep your wings concealed, lest the people startle and kill the premonition that is you, a template for the real. Your kindness must be well-aimed, pedestrian, conjured through hugs and verse, squeezed through fingers unafraid of dirt. Your words must ride with the trends, flow parallel to party music, and fill the spaces of silence that punctuate the noise of living. So wear this body out, girl. Let it earn its breath. Die awake if you dare, if you're lucky, if you can see. Recreate our forgotten home from the blueprint of your secret name. We're waiting on you to change the game. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so I guess I'll uh, close us out. And this is a little bit of a little bit. This is man in the mirror claps back. You call me Jocko when I create my own color wheel, display my ante to the world. You call me Jesus Juice when watching your cool, loud, antsy children, the innocent pond for black male. You say I am washed out, pale boy man, a weird, strange weed. When I've been working four and a half decades of my 50 years on the earth we share. When dead, I rule the charts like lava takes over just by rolling. Sorry, Paul, about the whole Beatles rupture, just business. Sorry, Memphis, about marrying a Presley, but I am the only king. Sorry, fans, about the last concert, but I needed to go supernova because the shit got real. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Cause, and you know what? Because you said because the shit got real, and that's really where we're at right now. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. So appropriate, Curtis. Thank you so much. You all are fantastic, and it was just absolutely an honor and a privilege to read with you all tonight. Thank you so much. Such a blessing that you were all available, and that we we're all able to be here and still doing our art mm -hmm. and our craft in such a um, time of conflict, chaos and uncertainty 
Um, and I just wish you each of you the best uh, with your art. And thank you so much. Again, Tongo Eason Martin, Curtis L. Chrysler, Keisha Gay Anderson, uh, and myself, Dua Wa Frazier. We were sorry that Demetrius Daniel, a uh, tromboetry uh, poet and musician, could not be uh, here with us this evening. Um, however, perhaps uh, Demetrius will join us at some other time. Uh, but I want to thank the audience for being here and ask that all of you, uh, please, those of you watching, please visit the poet's website. Uh, see them here, follow them here on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, Poetchrysler.com is Curtis Chrysler's website. Keisha Gay Anderson can be reached at uh, KeishaGayInc.com. Is that correct, Keisha? Oh, KeishaGay.inc, like ink in a pen. Keisha.GayInc. Well, you see, KeishaGay.inc, yep. <laughs> KeishaGay.inc. This is on the screen. Have, you just write my... KeishaGay.inc. <laughs> I get it, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Congo Eason Martin at under, underscore Tongo Gara underscore and myself, Duewa Frazier on Facebook or Duewa Frazier on Instagram. Thank you all again. Do you all have anything else you want to say or share before we really officially close out? I, I, actually, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say I'm just happy to be here with you and share mm -hmm. the space and grateful. And that's it. That's just gratitude. <laughs> See, now, now I feel shady because oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but, uh, uh, about, uh, six years, a few, some years ago, I wrote a curriculum on extrajudicial killing of, uh, mm -hmm. black people that, that, uh, would be good for some political education, uh, today. So, if anybody out there involved in some organizing efforts, um, it, it's this this site called Operation Ghetto Storm org. Actually, has the study that came up with every twenty eight hour statistic, and then along with that, it, along with the study, is the curriculum. So, you know, I know we're trying to figure out what to do right now. Political education is a crucial component. So, uh, check check that out and see if it's if, if any of it is is some use to organizing efforts going on right now. Yeah. And I just want to, I'm just glad to be here with you all and uh, learning more about you, hearing you, uh, even though we can't be face to face and looking for the day when we can be face to face. So, you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best and stay safe, stay blessed and stay healthy. Thank you. All Thank right. you all for joining us. Right. Peace. Peace. Well, y'all be safe too out there. Right. All right. I hear that. Oh, leave.